Hey everyone, welcome back to Tidal Gardens. Today we're diving back into reef chemistry with a quick discussion on potassium. Why should anyone care about potassium, you might ask? I'll admit that it's a fringe chemical parameter that most hobbyists don't pay close attention to. I can say that several publications attribute blue coloration in corals to potassium. If you've been in this hobby for a little while, you'd know that blue is one of the most difficult colors to come across, especially if you're looking for blue coloration that also fluoresces. When it comes to water testing, calcium, alkalinity, and magnesium get all the focus and attention, and for good reason. Those three parameters have the most influence on the health and growth of stony corals. Although it's overlooked, potassium, it's not a trace element. It's an ion that's as abundant in salt water as calcium, but it's far less understood and it's almost never tested for in comparison. Potassium's effect on the expression of blue coloration in corals, it's a bit anecdotal, but setting that aside, it does impact other aspects of reef biology. So what does potassium do? First off, it promotes macroalgae growth as well as zooxanthellae production in corals. It's also used in building stony coral skeletons, as well as other processes within the cell. In both cases, it plays only a bit part. Even if potassium levels were far below 400 parts per million, any difference in the health of the corals, it may be really subtle. Now that's in stark contrast to say, calcium, where a drop into the 200 part per million range would be very noticeable. Let's quickly do a potassium test. There's a few different test kit manufacturers such as Red Sea and Salifert, but today we'll go ahead and try the Geisman test. All of these tests are your basic titration. First off, let's grab the sample. Next, we'll put the first reagent in there and then give it all a stir. The next reagent is actually a two-part. And finally, the third reagent is what we're going to do the titration with. Like with all of these titrations, we're going to grab this 1 ml syringe, and we're going to see how much of this reagent we use, and that's going to determine how much of the potassium is actually in the water sample. What we're looking for is a color change from this kind of yellowish color to a blue color, which is just about there. Lastly, check the syringe. And then we find the corresponding value on this little chart here, which looks like it's going to be a little over 400. The fact that we're testing a little high for potassium is actually not great. Way back in 2005, Advanced Aquarius did a salt mix study. They found that potassium levels across several different salt brands were lower than ocean saltwater levels. On average, they tested out at about 300 parts per million. And there's some debate on whether those tests were accurate, but assuming that the figures are correct, it's kind of understandable why a manufacturer would err on the side of lower potassium numbers. Low potassium is not necessarily a bad thing, because the problems that an aquarist might face from levels that are too low, they're mild and nonspecific. High concentrations of potassium, however, have more severe consequences. First of all, too much potassium can lead to drab appearance in corals as a result of overproduction of zooxanthellae, zooxanthellae having mostly like a brown color. Second, excess potassium can lead to an overgrowth of algae. Most of the time, potassium levels can be maintained just by doing regular water changes, but it can be drained excessively if you're using some sort of ultra-low nutrient system, and that would require additional supplementation because bacteria consume potassium for their biological processes and lowers the value over time as they get skimmed out. Personally, I wouldn't worry too much about it unless you're running some sort of ultra-low nutrient system, because despite its abundance in salt water, it has a relatively low usage rate, and it's unlikely to be depleted between regular water changes like I mentioned. So that pretty much does it for an overview on potassium. So I'm curious for the folks out there that are actually dosing for potassium, do you guys notice a change in the coral coloration? Are you seeing more blues? Please let me know in the comments below. All right, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Special thanks to our donors on Patreon for supporting this channel. Until next time, happy reefing.